what if we could make you the hero of your own story? Now, wouldn't that be cool? Let's do it starting right now. You are listening to the IT Path Podcast. I'm your host, Dana Morrison. Let's go and help you claim your journey into IT. All right, I hear you. You're saying, okay, Dana, what does this mean? What does it mean to be the hero of my own story? Well, you are the hero. You have You have things that you're trying to accomplish in your life. You're living your own story. Nobody, you're not living anybody else's story and nobody can live your story for you. So let's figure out how we can make you the hero of your own story and help you shorten your path. It's like if you're watching a movie and you're frustrated because this character cannot get uh, the things that they're, they're trying to achieve. It just doesn't get done. And then all of a sudden they meet somebody that helps them along the way. Isn't that great? Don't we feel that sense of like, ah, yes, the person finally meets the guide in the story. And that is what makes it bringing that plot all together. The plot thickens. We're at that point right now. The plot is going to thicken for you right now. Welcome back to the IT Path Podcast, where we get you moving, keep you moving on your IT journey. We want to see you have success. We want to get you out of the confusion and into clarity. Today, I'm going to do a little bit different here. We're going to uh, try to read read your mind. Uh, where are you at in your journey? And I'm I'm going to draw from my own experience, and I'm going to bring you down through this story. And in this story, let's put you in the place of the hero. The story is about you. You are the hero. You have bills that you've got to meet. You have families that you need to support. You have toys that you want to buy. Uh, You just have things that you need to pay for. But in addition to that, There is some fulfillment that you need to have internally. And really, this is bigger than the bills. This is bigger than the other things. There's something inside you that is burning to start your IT journey. And you're the hero in the story. And in the hero of the story, you also have to realize that there has to be a villain, right? You can't just have the hero. You have to have a villain. So the hero, you, you want to have fulfillment and you want to start your IT career, make more money, but get that sense of fulfillment inside that you really desire. You don't want to wake up every morning feeling like, oh, I have to go to work. Remember the story I told you back when I transitioned out of uh, school and I went into a managed service provider and working with an audit department and the frustration I felt with that. And every day was more stressful. And every day I just wanted to quit. Every day I started looking at my car and different things uh, as, as, as problems because I looked at my car and I'm like, I have to take that car to work. And I associated the lump in my chest with getting in my vehicle. Man, that's not a good place to be. So you're, you're the hero though, right? You're the hero in your own story. I'm not your hero. You are the hero because you want to do something. You want to do something astounding. You want to break through some barriers. I can't do that for you, but I can help you in the process. So there is a villain though. There's a villain that's preventing you from getting to the other side of this. Uh, For some of you, that villain is lies. You believe lies. You're believing lies about yourself right now. You're believing somehow, some way, I just can't do it. I just can't get into IT. Uh, there's too many things in the way. I don't have money for education. Um, I, I'm not good enough to start this IT career. And I just, I'm stuck. I have this burning desire, but there's just no way for me to realize it. Well, there is, there is a way. 
Um, but let's let's explore the villain a little bit in a little bit more detail. Um, formal IT education undoubtedly is expensive and offers antiquated content. Uh, wow, I just made a, a pretty bold statement there. Formal IT education is expensive and offers antiquated content. When you go to a four-year college, you're typically not learning the cutting edge tools. That's actually life experience. When you're actually in the job and you're working inside the job, that's when you learn the cutting edge uh, tools. Uh, that's when you're exposed to problems that drive you and make you want to learn. So this villain is encompassed in this idea that I don't have enough money to pay for this formal education to start my IT career. I have to spend money in order to realize my dreams. And that is a villain. That's a that's a villain in your brain. But I also want you to go down the path of thinking about four-year education, two-year education, as a matter of fact. Think about just a two-year associates program. A four-year program is obviously going to be much more expensive, but a two-year program to get your associates in IT is north of $7,000. $7,000. And you've got to, you know, work on some schedule usually. Well, I guess a lot of these classes are on online now. So they do give you some flexibility. $7,000. Two years, seven grand. And guess what? When you come out of that associate's program, the chances are you have no experience to put down on your resume. Basically, you have a two years associates that you can put down on your resume. And that is worth something. Is it worth the seven grand? I'm not sure about that. So you have these institutions that require you to pay to get in. Because you go through an associate's degree program, does that guarantee that you're going to land a job? No, absolutely not. There's no guarantee. Actually, there's really no guarantee either way, whether you go or don't go, that you're going to land the job you want. However, I do believe that, well, we'll get there. Uh, and I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So you've got this money problem right? Money and time, they require their requirements, their their prerequisites to get you started on your journey. So outside this institution, there's a loan officer. And that loan officer says, okay, so uh, first of all, the associate's degree program, yeah, seven grand. Let's say you wanted to go to a four-year college and get a bachelor's degree. Four-year college. Now think about that just a state level public four year college very minimum very minimum 17 grand and i know that i'm i'm throwing out a really low number cuz then you also have to think about books fees uh, everything else that's involved uh is it a full time you you're, you're going to be a student full time you're not going to be working i mean there's just a whole lot of issues uh, that are involved there as well like paying to live while you're trying to go to school, unless mom and dad throw you some money and say, oh, yeah, go party and have enjoy yourself. And in which case, a lot of times the students are not even really focused on the education. So let's say you're older. Let's say you're 40 years old. I don't know how old you are, 30, whatever, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, however old you are, you decide, OK, uh, this career path that I'm on right now is not working. So I'm going to go to this castle. And outside this castle, there's a person that's saying, you got to you gotta pay to enter our castle. Because guess what? Keeping our castle up to speed is expensive. Man, we got windows that we have to wash. We have grass that we have to cut. We have maintenance that has to happen here. We have to stay up on, on you know, try and, and catch up with what's going on with the tech industry. So, you, you know what? I can't afford it. Oh, okay. Well, you can't afford it. So, let's do this. I tell you what. We've got this great arrangement for you. Let's, let's shuttle you over to this loan officer. And this loan officer is going to make you 
uh, pay against your own future. It's going to make you make a bet on yourself in relation to the career that you want to get into. So you go through this loan process and you end up with this 30, 40, 50, north of $50,000 loan in order to be able to get your IT, some bachelor's degree in IT. Do you have experience when you come out of that? Probably not. You might've picked up a little job here and there. That would be huge. That would be a huge help, but you probably don't have much experience. You've got classroom training. And in that classroom, are they teaching you the cutting edge tools? No. So you're stuck. You get out, you get your bachelor's degree and you get out and you're still on the hunt to figure out how you're going to get experience because that is what's going to mean most on your resume. So you've got this conflict going on. Like, can I afford this? Can I pay for this? Can I start my career? What is this going to cost me? If I do a, a, a associate's program, I'm talking seven grand. If I do this other program, I'm talking 17 at the very minimum north of that. Um, and I just pulled that those stats out of, uh, you know, Google, by the way. What is the very, you know, what is the the, the very minimum that you can get by with this on? Um and there are some grants and different things that will help you and, and pay for things. But that's basically uh, the average out of uh, lowest average out of pockets. It's going to be somewhere around seven grand. So you feel trapped, man, I'm trapped. I'm trapped by my finances. I'm unfulfilled. I'm not really making progress in my tech journey, my career. I, I, I've got this thing that's burning desire in me to move forward. And then you're frustrated because you can't get your technology career started. You don't know how. You're just stuck. And then you've got people saying, oh, you know, don't pay all that money for education. You've got some that say, oh, just go out and take the loan and bet against yourself, you know, or bet, bet for yourself, right? You're not betting against yourself. You're actually betting for yourself by taking a loan out. You're saying, yeah, I can do this. So you're, you're stuck in this dilemma. And then if you're married and have kids and have other expenses, that makes the hole even deeper. That makes it even harder to shift, harder to change. You've got this philosophical problem going on inside you too. How do you get experience, the most powerful part of your resume, to get the career you desire? You're stuck on all of these things. This is your problem. You're the hero of the story. And guess what? You can get out of this because you are the hero of the story. You can move forward. You can get your career in IT. So what changes? What changes? I'm giving you a movie plot here as I walk through this, by the way. And actually, I put all of the story of what we're doing at IT Path in this framework, which basically tells it like a movie, right? Um, you're stuck. You can't move forward. You've got a philosophical and internal and external problem. There's this villain that wants to take all your money with no guarantees of whether you're going to get into IT. However, at some point, you meet a guide. You meet somebody that can help you. Now, I, I don't know if you remember, if you've listened to the episode back, uh, it was probably episode one or two, where I explained that I met a guide. Alex, in education, he showed me, he was the first one to ever show me after working in IT and education for over to, uh, 10, 12, uh, yeah, oh my goodness, uh, 16 years, 16 years in IT, and nobody had ever shown me how to do a budget. I was IT director, administrator, all of that stuff. Nobody ever showed me how to do a budget, but I met a guide, Alex. And he showed me how to make an IT budget. And that changed my life. I met another guide by reading a book and meeting with this guy, JB, who JB said, you got to go read the Phoenix Project. And I read the Phoenix Project. And the Phoenix Project became like a guide for me. Many books have become guides for me. Many tools have become guides for me. I met a guide. And I have worked happily in IT for 25 years, less the little two months, the, the little two month stint where I was at a uh, managed service provider and hated it. Other than that, 25 years. 
happily in IT. Meeting a guide is important for you. Am I that guide at IT Path? I don't know. I'm not the only guide out there, but I am one of them. And I've got 25 years that I want to impart on you. I'm not the hero in the story, though. You have to remember that. And if you meet somebody else who says, oh, I can help you do this, guaranteed. And, and you know, we're going to walk down through this. Yeah, it's it's BS. <laughs> Nobody out there can be your hero for you. You have to be your own hero. That means you have to make a decision. You've got to go out and you've got to find somebody that can help you on this journey. Find somebody who will take painful steps with you and guide you through some of the hardest pieces of this path. They're not going to teach you this in your two-year or four-year program. Guarantee it. They're just not. And everybody I've talked to who's worked in IT, who's gone through associates and bachelor's degree programs, tell me that they've, they've not learned this. They've not learned how to be a mentor to somebody else. This, this wisdom is not imparted that way. It's They put this all into a process. Well, if you just do this, 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 and this. Well, guess what? You run into a problem that's not in the book. Chris, uh, Chris Tucker, my coworker, uh, he was telling me in the interview with him, uh, yeah, what happens when you run into a problem that's not in the book? You have to have a guide. You have to have somebody that you can be like, man, I just ran into this. I've never seen this before. This is a problem. Let that guide help you. That guide can walk through it with you. And when we come back, we're going to uh, talk about the plan aspect of all of this. Hey, this is Dana Morrison, host of the IT Path Podcast, and I hope you are enjoying this week's episode. Are you interested in getting into IT? Let me ask you one simple question. What is holding you back? IT Path is dedicated to developing a community, content, and courses that will help you get unlocked and stay unlocked on your IT journey. I have more than 25 years experience in IT, and I want to share with you what I've learned and give you the tools to succeed on your very own IT Path. Even if you are just starting out on your IT journey, we're here for you. To find out more, simply go to itpath.net and sign up for the mailing list, and we will start by sharing some tips, tricks, and tools to help you get going and keep you going. Go to itpath.net and claim your journey. Start your IT path today. Thank you so much, and let's get back to the episode. And we're back. You've met a guide. You've met somebody who can help you, whether that's me at IT Path, whether, whether that's somebody else at IT Path, maybe that's somebody at a different company, maybe you already know somebody who can be your guide. This person has uh, experience in IT. This person has experience in IT. Forget the education. Forget whether or not they have their master's. Forget whether or not they have a doctorate's or a bachelor's. It doesn't matter. You've met somebody with experience in IT that has taken these steps that looks back at your journey and says, oh, yeah, I remember what it was like to be like you. And they want to speed that up. Now, remember, for 14 years in IT, I did not have this. I did not have a guide. And then I met Alex and Alex brought me through some painful points in my own career journey. So what does a guide do for you? That guide gives you a plan. You're the hero. Remember, you're the hero. Okay. You're the hero in this story. The guide gives you a plan, step by step, how you can move forward. How is that even possible? Maybe it's the daily things that are going on with you on your journey that you're bringing up questions and that guide gives you a plan of action to tackle it. And then you can move forward to the next step because that guide has given you step one. Well, let me walk you through. This is this is IT path. This is from my perspective at IT path. This has gotten, you know, this isn't, uh, you know, and, and maybe this is not typical uh, for what I'm mentor or a guide is going to give you. But let me walk you through how I look at this, how I look at being a guide for you. One, I want to make sure that you, the hero, 
are on the right track. And how do we do that? Well, one, we have a free tool uh, that allows you to assess your uh, uh, your interests and skills, right? It, it, it's right at itpath.net. You just go there and you're going to browse that first page. You're going to see something that says uh, a free assessment. You can take that free assessment and that free assessment also gives you steps that you can do right now to get going. That's part of a, that's part of being a guide is offering you the right tools at the right time. So if you're ready to assess, that tool's there, it's waiting for you. Two, help you start your learning and experience. And getting started with your learning and experience requires you have some base knowledge about where you're at. It doesn't, it's not base knowledge as far as like how this is how you plug in a computer. It's base knowledge about yourself and your skills and in, in light of your skills and interests that helps you move forward, getting unlocked from lies and all of that. That Guess what? That is free as well. If you go to itpath.net, uh, you should see a pop-up that shows up there. If you don't see a pop-up for the free um, Am I Wired for IT course, then you can just email me direct, Dana at itpath.net. That's Dana, D-A-N-A at itpath.net. And I'll just, I'll give you the link if you don't see it. Because I'm, I'm running that as part of a promotion right now. Uh, but I will give you that for free. So that gets you started. You know what your interests and skills are. And you know how they align to your learning and, uh, and you know, start your learning experience with basically getting to, I'm not saying this well, <laughs> one, one, you assess, two, you start your learning and experience. And to start your learning and experience, you have to have some base knowledge about yourself, maybe lies that you've believed in, as well as how does your, uh, how does your uh, skills align to the path that you want to pursue? That, and that's the first step. You can't start learning until you know what you want to learn, right? So that's the first step. Okay, so assessing your interest and skills, starting your learning and experience. All right, number three, a clear job application process. Who walks you through this when you're getting ready to put together your application? You're getting ready to put together your cover letter and you're getting ready to make a phone call maybe to HR. And you're just nervous as all get out. Well, you've got to have a clear process to be able to handle this. You can't just throw caution to the wind and say, I don't know, throw this stuff on a piece of paper. I'm going to shoot it out in an email. Hope I get the job. You know, just I, I hope this is impactful and meaningful. Well, guess what? A guide can also help you with that. And a guide should help you with that. And if you're questioning how do you apply for a particular job, a guide can help you. Because guess what? A guide can also can also walk beside you and say, hey, look, your skills, your experience does not actually level up to this position at this time. If I was your uh, the, the interviewer in this, I would probably tell you, hey, Bob, Hey, Susie, uh, Clarissa, whatever your name is, insert your name here. Uh, maybe you should be thinking about this level position instead of this level position. It doesn't look like you have the experience to step in at this level. Well, a guide can help you avoid that mistake. And that shortens your path as well because it gets your, now you're getting your resume, your cover letter in front of, uh, of opportunities that actually link better with where your experience is at right now. That's hugely important. And a good guide is going to help you. Hey, let's look at your cover letter together. Let's walk through this. All right, let's look at your resume together. Let's walk through your resume. We want to be able to do that. We want to be able to offer that. That's that's in inside our calls, inside our opportunities uh, for connecting with real people at IT Path. We can get on a call. You can share your screen. You can say, hey, look, this is what I'm looking at. This is where my experience is right now. You know what? We can even do a mock interview for you. I can ask you questions that I would be asking if, if I was having somebody apply for a similar position to what you're looking for. And you can feel confident then because you're going to know what a lot of these common questions are. And you're going to be able to have confidence. And Because guess what? 
in the interview, the interviewer's not going to, I actually have done this before. I stopped somebody uh, in an interview and I said, look, I want you to use this as a learning experience. <laughs> this person must have thought, you know, this person was applying for a position uh, at, a, at this particular company I was at at the time. And this person applied for the position. And uh, um, I said, uh, so what experience do you have that aligns with this, in, this, uh, this job, this role? And the person said, well, you know, I really don't have any experience that aligns with this. And I stopped him. I said, look, you do. It's on your resume. You have to read between the lines and and then be able to look at what's already on your resume what's already in your wheelhouse and be able to answer that question confidently it's kind of like stop them i think he was a little taken aback like uh oh okay my my uh, interviewer is giving me some tips <laughs> but typically that's not going to happen in your interview but i can do that with you and a, and a good guide can do that with you uh so you get through this job application process and you start your career you get going but guess what? You're starting your career and something happens and you've got further questions. You're just not sure about certain things. You're not sure about some lingo that people are throwing around the office. And you might be a little embarrassed to ask some obvious questions, some, uh, some, some questions that have obvious answers. Well, we can give you uh, some of that support and start your career. We can give you some of that support because we're not going to cut you off on our calls. So you get on our calls, you start talking about some, Hey, I've started my career, but, uh, you know, I'm, I, I heard this, this, I heard people keep talking about this, uh, whatever, some, some terminology. And man, I, I really don't know, or somebody's asked me to help lead a project. And I, I, I just have no idea how to even start doing that. Uh, we can give you tips. So think about that. We're just taking a lot of the heartache out of your job for you and giving you some people that you can vent to. That's what a guide does. Guide listens and, and helps correct you along the way. And then the last thing in, in here is uh, get long-term career support. And I'll read down back down to the list in a minute. But to give you long-term career support, a guide, a mentor, a coach, that's what they're going, going to do for you. They're going to give you long-term career support, wherever you're at, whatever you're thinking about, you know what, maybe it's time to change roles. You know what, I'm getting a little frustrated about this job. That mentor can can come alongside you and say, hey, look, you know, I know this situation looks bleak and I know it looks difficult, but stick it out. Give it a couple more months. See if you can get over this hump or uh, encourage you that way, right? Um, or if it is time to transition, guess what, your mentor, your guide, your coach can come alongside you and say, hey, you know what? Maybe it's time to think about this opportunity or that opportunity. You're really starting to build some great experience. Maybe you should, maybe you should think about transitioning in this way. Uh, a, a good mentor guide coach is also going to be able to say, hey, look, don't burn any bridges on your way out. Keep a great attitude to the very last day. I know you're frustrated. Now you know you want to vent some things. Don't do it. Bite your tongue because these people are also going to act as a reference on your resume. So you want to leave with grace and you want to have a good, good rapport with everybody when you leave one job and you go into another. I could walk into any of, and in fact, my first gig, anytime I'm talking to them, they say, hey, when are you going to come back? When are you going to be back in town? I've got questions. Uh, we, we need help with this. We need help with that. It's never ending. Uh, I could talk to people in any of my previous jobs and any one of them would say, except for the one I, I just outright quit because I hated it. <laughs> uh, any of them would say, hey, look, uh, can, you, can you give me some advice about whatever it is? And that's what it means to build, have good bridges along this the entire journey. So let me run through that plan again, those five things. One, assessing your skills and interests. Again, that's free, itpath.net. Start your learning and experience. Start that now. And we have a, a little mini, am I wired for IT mini course that's free. 
And if you go to itpath.net, you're going to see a little pop up after about, I don't know, 10 seconds or something like that. I know maybe you're annoyed with those, but hey, just hang around for 10 seconds and get the pop up and get the free mini course. <laughs> uh, three, a clear job application process. Let's take the confusion out of it, because if you've taken the time to get some experience so that you can present it in the workplace, let's make sure you're presenting it well. Four, start your career. This is the starting point, and it's also going to be a lot of questions and a lot of anxiety and a lot of uh, maybe frustrations and different things as you as you try and learn uh, a new businesses, uh, the way that they operate and all of that. We can guide you. We can help you along the way. Hop on the calls and let's let's get the questions out of the way and let's lower your anxiety about taking your first step in IT. All right. And then number five, get long term career support, continued group coaching calls, continued support calls that allow you to vent and to uh, get camaraderie and uh, can keep you moving forward in your own IT journey. You're the hero. This is you getting it done. So on our end, um, you know, and, and, you know, there is a lot of, there are a lot of uh, different mentoring and coaching programs out there that can get you going and get you started on your journey. No question. There's a lot of them out there, but on our end, how do we, how do we uh, do this uh, for you in a way that uh, you can feel rest assured that things are going to move smoothly for you, that your experience is going to be as smooth as I just outlined. One, we have we have four promises that we make to you. We will give you clear and personal direction. I apologize if this sounds like a really long commercial. I'm just saying that these are important things that that need to happen for you. But we want to give you clear and personal direction. We want to meet your needs where you're at, okay? We will give you clear and personal direction. We will only recommend to you the critical training. Rather than going through the big classroom experience and having to take this and that and things that you're never going to use in the workplace again, we are. All, all, let's just focus on the essentials for you to get you moving in your IT career, okay? So we're only going to recommend the things that are critical. And a lot of that critical training is actually really inexpensive. You can get a lot of, uh, man, uh, Udemy, there's, there's such cheap training options that are available to the world now and free, free programming. And if you dive into AI, there's all sorts of things that you can learn just by using AI. We're only going to recommend the things that are critical to getting you moving on your journey. So cut out all the chaff, cut out all the waste. We're not going down that road. Let's just focus on what is essential to help you take your first step. Uh, we're going to show you the easy ways to get ex experience. We will show you easy ways to get experience. All right. So again, when you come through the college education system, they're not going to give you experience, which is critical, which is going to tie back to your resume. So let's get you critical experience that is actually going to be helpful on your resume. Uh, and that doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be expensive. You know, uh, I'm a big, uh, big advocate of raspberry pies and messing around with cheap technology in your house. And that gives you experience. And man, you can run a little server on a raspberry Pi. you know, for 70 bucks or whatever for the four gigabyte version that uh, that is right now. Um, there's there is supply out there. Uh, you can you can start building your own little servers and things like that. And that is definitely resumeable. Okay, you can put that on your resume. And we will help you start your IT career with confidence. Instead of like this apprehension, oh, I don't know. Now I'm taking the step. Now I'm filling out the resume. And, and now I'm filling out the, the cover letter. And oh, oh my goodness, uh, I'm a little nervous right now. What does this mean? I'm stepping into this. Uh, let's do it with confidence. Let's take those questions out of the way. Let's let you be able to interact and ask questions of, of, your, of a coach, of a guide, of a mentor that helps clear up the muddy waters before you put your feet in there, right? Um, so all of that, that's, that's what, you know, and, and what, what do we want to see, I guess, 
for you. We want to see success, right? That's our measuring stick. You're the hero. We want the hero to have success. We're just out here as cheerleaders, as guides, you know, clapping along the way and, and helping you keep moving and helping you stay focused and acting as a coach to make sure you're not wasting your time and energy with training plans and different things that aren't going to get you to where you're trying to go. Uh, let's keep you moving uh, in a way that actually makes a lot of sense. And that success is going to be in quite a few different forms. But let me let me tell you what the success should look like. You realize that money and time required in formal education aren't required to get your IT career started. That's success. When you realize that, that is success. You receive a sense of freedom in knowing you are on a path to fulfillment and have begun your IT career. That's success. You are now empowered to get the experiences required without the financial overhead. <laughs> overhead. That is success. And what are the failures that we're trying to help you avoid? Look, we don't want you to waste time in a two to four year college program if IT is not for you. Uh, we don't want you to throw away $17,000 for a bachelor's minimum or 7K for an associate's minimum. We don't want you to throw that money away. We don't want you to have wasted energy, wasted time. Schools teach a lot of old technologies. That's going to slow you down on your journey. We do not want you to experience those failures. And man, that can hurt. Because if you if you go out and buy and you get a loan and then you realize, oh man, you know what? This field is not for me. I do not like working in technology. You can't go into your loan office and say, hey, you know, this IT career, this isn't for me. Uh, can, can we just kind of like renege this loan? Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want this loan because this isn't for me. And by the way, they taught me old stuff in school anyway. Doesn't matter. If you get go out and get a loan and buy a car and it's an absolute clunker and, uh, you, you know, this is your fault. Uh, it's not the loan officer's fault. It's your own fault, right? So what does this transformation look like for you? What we hope for you? We want to see you move from being restricted by money and time for education to saving countless hours and multi-thousands of dollars on getting your IT career started. We want to see you, uh, we want to see you transform from feeling like you are meant to work in tech to feeling a sense of fulfillment on your IT career. And we want to see you transform from worrying about your, uh, from acquiring experience, you're worried about acquiring experience to getting as much experience as you want whenever you want it. That's what we want to see. And that's what we can help you do. But you've got to trust us a little bit in the in the journey. And I say trust us, I mean any mentor. You've got to put some, you've got to find a good mentor and you've got to trust them. You've got to be able to trust them because of their experience in IT. So we come at this with 25 years experience in IT, but you know what? What we want to see is the transformation happen for you. And it's happened for me. And it was a guide that helped me through this process. And I think that we can help you as well, move down this road and claim your journey in tech. This is Dana Morrison. Thank you for listening to the IT Path podcast. I'd love to hear from you. Dana at itpath.net. Drop me an email. You can go to itpath.net. You can get on, uh, uh, on the mailing list and all that stuff. Um, you can go there and get some of those free tools that I was talking about earlier. And let's get you going. Let's stop dreaming about where you're, you want to be. And let's get you moving on this IT journey. Let's claim it today. You have been listening to the IT Path Podcast. Did you like this episode? Why not subscribe and share with others? IT Path is dedicated to helping you claim your IT journey. You can find out more at itpath.net.